lucky. <laughs> what do we fix? <laughs> karma, karma. Kind of like the time the power went out. So we'll have roll call and pledge of allegiance. Council Member Story. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. Council Member Brooks. Here. Council Member Botworth. Here. Mayor Bertrand. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seeing a lot of people here tonight, we have a special system for determining how much you'd like to say. It's three, two, and one minute. Our city clerk will explain the procedure. Yes, basically, if you have a short comment, um, one minute or less, you should choose a green card from the large display at the back. Um, those, all of those holding green cards will be invited up first, and you'll be timed for one minute. Next comes the yellow card group, which is two minutes. Um, and finally, for those who wish to speak the full three minutes, um, those will be called up last. It's entirely your choice. If you want to say something quick and go home and eat, pick a, pick a green. Um, but you are welcome to choose whichever you prefer. Um, you can put as much or as little information as you want on the card. I use them to get the spelling of your name right in the minutes. Thank you. One additional comment, if you could line up, because there's so many people that would help speed things along. Are there any additional materials? Yes, we received 14 public comment emails. Thank you. So um, this is a special hearing and as permitted by state government control, we are limiting public comment to the agenda items. So usually we have public comment ahead of time, but at this point we're not gonna do that. Um, city council comments or city staff comments? Okay, so let's go into the general government hearing to consider a homeless shelter crisis declaration. Staff report, please. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, <clears throat> tonight before you is uh, an item to consider whether or not to declare a homeless shelter crisis in the city of Capitola. Uh, California law allows cities to declare a homeless uh, crisis when a significant number of persons are found to be lacking in helping, lack, lacking in shelter, and thereby um, resulting in a threat to their public health and safety. The declaration allows the city to do a number of things, uh, specifically suspend some specific regulations uh, around um, uh, housing and minimum safety standards that, and also implement alternative uh, standards to ensure minimal amount of public safety. It also grants immunity to, from liability uh, for operators of emergency shelters. In addition, what the declaration does is it also allows the city or potential sub-recipients, sub-grant recipients, nonprofits and the like, to tap into one-time funding for capital expenditures within the city. Uh, those types of eligible expenditures would be for emergency shelters, navigation centers, transition centers, the list you see on your screen. Um, to declare a shelter crisis, the city would need to find that based on the last point in time count, which was last done in 2017, that the number of unhoused individuals found within the city constitutes a crisis. You can see the number here countywide was 2,200, uh, 20, 2,249. In Capitola, we had 21 unsheltered individuals. Um, the city of Santa Cruz, Watsonville, and the county have all declared shelter crisis, and the deadline for such a declaration would be January 15th to make it. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the available funding. It was through SB 850 that the state made, I think it was, I think I can't remember the statewide number, it was 500 million statewide available for uh, solutions for homeless problems through the Homeless Emergency Aid Program, or HEAP, I'll use that acronym um, throughout this presentation. The number for Santa Cruz County, our region is just under $9.7 million that's made available. The funds go to our Regional Housing Action Partnership, or HAP, um, who will then allocate the funding through a grant process. And the declaration, as I mentioned before, would allow grant applicants to submit an applicant application for a capital improvement within the city of Capitola. Um, what 
isn't impacted by a crisis declaration is, is that regional services funded through the HEAP could be used by individuals within the city um, even if we don't have a shelter crisis. For example, the sort of person-based regional housing assistance or um, programs to avoid homelessness that are regional in nature, uh, c people within the city would be able to enjoy those benefits. But a place-based rental assistance program, for example, like a master lease department building, that would not be an opportunity to be funded uh, through the HEAP grant without a shelter crisis declaration. In general, the HEAP grant application is divided, the, the funding from the HEAP grant, uh, that's been submitted to the state and it's divided into these six basic categories. 26% are about $2.5 million is for services. That's sort of street outreach, examples, um, housing navigation, hygiene facilities, safe parking, things along those lines. 17% are about 1.6 million is for rental assistance or subsidies. These can be prevention and diversion programs, rapid rehousing, rental assistance, security deposit guarantee programs, those kinds of things. Um, capital improvements, which is the largest pot, is 35%, about three, just under 3.4 million. That can be for those list of items that we saw on the previous slide, shelters, navigation centers, expansion to affordable housing programs, incentives to build ADUs, um, sort of more immediate solutions, storage, hygiene centers, those types of things. Lastly, there's a required homeless use set aside carve out at 15%, which is about just under 1.5 million. That can be for youth facilities, uh, drop-in centers, housing options, mental health treatment, things along those lines. The other line is really strategic planning, program evaluation, community outreach, and then the HEAP administration really just comes down to, to front, funding the cost of to get all the money onto the street. So the countywide budget that we're gonna be receiving from the state is this 9.7 million. And that's, that's the same independent of whether or not the city makes a crisis declaration or not. Um, the city of Capitol has a long history of participating in regional homeless efforts. Uh, this year we've allocated $34,000 out of our general fund to participate in the regional winter shelter, homeless shelter program uh, and to fund an improved coordinated entry system. Coordinated entry is intended to be a single system so that if an individual is experiencing homelessness that they end up, regardless of which door they choose, which service provider they encounter, that they end up in an integrated system uh, countywide. The city also allocates significant funding through our community grant program to different nonprofit entities who provide services to homeless individuals, including Encompass, um, HSC, Homeless Services Center, Families in Transition, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, United Way. With that, takes us to our potential action for this evening. So council has the discretion whether or not they wanna consider the resolution to declare a homeless crisis shelter uh, within Capitola. Alternatively, no action is needed this evening if a shelter crisis declaration is not warranted. With that, I'm available for questions. Um, City Council, uh, Sam, any questions of staff? No. Okay, Ed, Chris, okay. No, at this point I'd like to open it for general comments from the audience here and remember choose the card that you'd like uh, depending on how much time you'd like to speak. Uh, so just come right forward. Green cards. Green. Yep. green cards will yeah, come green up cards first. first, I'm sorry. I try to line up since there's many people to speak tonight. And um, thank you very much for showing up, uh, appreciate uh, the participation here, thank you. My name is Mark Kane, and my wife and I are residents here in Capitola. And uh, on this issue, I just want everybody to know that um, I've never been on a board of a, a nonprofit, nor am I a paid advocate for homeless. Uh, I'm just a resident. And I respectfully uh, ask this, the uh, council to vote no on this. Um, I don't think it's a path that Capitola wants to go down and especially not to duplicate the efforts that are already there. It's been shown that the, if you're spending money, it's better to spend it on the existing programs in Watsonville, in our case, Santa Cruz City and Santa Cruz County. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any other green cards?
My name's uh, Chris Irving. I'm a resident as well as a business owner here in Capitola. Um, and I, my vote is for no also on the homeless shelter. Um, various reasons. Uh, that area was um, is next to Capitola Villas. That was also kind of a sore spot, uh, already a sore spot with parking and traffic. Um, I do like the idea of providing some sort of assistance to these people. Uh, I don't think a homeless shelter is the, the right um, course of action for that. I also think that um, I'd like to see how we determine um, a crisis and uh, th I think the, it said significant amount of people. So I'm wondering how that's determined. Uh, it looks like for the, the HEAP funding, there are very uh, uh, succinct numbers and it's broken out into a formula. They've done a lot of thought on how, how they derive at those. Um, it seems like this is kind of arbitrary as far as what we're determining to be a significant amount of people. Um, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Any more green cards? Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Robinson. I am a homeowner on 38th Avenue. And I would like a, a no vote on the homeless shelter because I feel like it's not a good location, especially with those train tracks right there. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, just stick in that. Uh, yeah, the, this, this is a little, you can little use the dish bowl, there. The, the box disappears. No more green cards. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, soccer play. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, so, next color up, if we're not. Oh, we have another green card. Sorry. Hi, my name is John Griffith. I'm a resident here. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to urge the uh, uh, the council to vote no. Uh, for one, I, I don't see where, or I'd be interested to know how this is a crisis with 21 homeless people. Um, <clears throat> I think probably people in Capitola, for the most part, look at what's gone on in Santa Cruz and pray to God that we don't have the same scenario here of um, so many resources over there that perhaps so many homeless that aren't from here and others that are falling into that category that are uh, dealing or using drugs have changed Santa Cruz forever. I think a lot of people in Capitola want us to retain the charm that we have now. So I'd like to urge you to vote now. Thank you, John. Come on right up. So we have one more green card behind you, sir. No, that's okay. Ah. Good evening. Thank you for your, this opportunity. I'd ask you to vote no on this. This has happened very quickly, I think. Uh, there's an issue to get the grant wrote by tomorrow, and I think that's a poor decision for our city. We have supported the homeless through the county seat and the Santa Cruz County through Santa Cruz. I know we've donated money, helped out where we can. This is something that's an action that you guys are kind of real fast. I don't think there's thought to it, and I don't think it's necessary. It's like. 1% is in Capitola of, it's not a crisis. It's a time to sit down and really give thought to what we want to do if we get a chance for this money. Not just, oh, let's do this, and we have an opportunity to get a handful of money and help out. So please vote no. Steve Kramer, here. Thank you, Steve. Any more green cards? Thank you. <coughs> Hi, Jeff Watts, local resident. Uh, I live on the railroad tracks right next to uh, the 30th Avenue location you're considering, I think. Um, I, th I would say this would be a no um, because we already deal with a lot of problems on the railroad tracks. We live right on the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. We deal with so many issues with people that are homeless and that are on the railroad tracks. Hmm. One of the things that my girlfriend has overheard people talking back there, they talk about whose houses they're gonna break into. Uh, there's gang affiliation back there. I think that this thing would raise a 
a lot more problems, and I don't think you guys would like it. That's it. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Are we finished with green cards? Seeing none, uh, yellow, I think that's the next color. Come on up. Thanks, sir. Good evening. My name is Neil Goldstein. I believe you all received my email. I'm here to speak against the homeless shelter crisis declaration. I'm a veteran who arrived here over 40 years ago. I lived in Santa Cruz as a homeless person until I found my way. I am now a homeowner in Capitola. How did I get, why is this with a mini, oh I see. How did I get from there to here? Homeless to owning a home here. Also, homeowners are being bled dry by taxes, and that's something that we've got to consider. The answer is simple, because nobody offered me a free ride. I knew that I had to work to eat. I worked as a busboy and a dishwasher in the Catalyst. I cleaned toilets and mopped floors as a janitor. I picked fruit for growers. I swung a hammer in construction. I gained skills, then went to Cabrillo, Cabrillo College to gain more. I found pride in my accomplishments and learned to strive for more. I am thankful that there was no assistance for the homeless, no free food and no free shelter back then. Those are the chains that could have destroyed me. Public assistance is like a drug. It takes away the will to strive and succeed. It takes away self-respect and pride. It is a chain that binds us. It is the need and pride that drives people to greater heights and to achieve their potential. This special meeting for what I consider a fabricated crisis has concerned me. I have read that three people in this council were against it and two were for it. What I consider secret deals in back rooms to bring despair and hopeless to hopelessness to our city must not allowed be loud, you need to do better. People are coming not to trust you and will be watching you. I have to say no to this money and power grab based on a fabrication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Hi, my name is Todd Butka. I'm a business owner and homeowner here locally. Um, I vote, would encourage you to vote no um, for this uh, measure. I have two young kids, two and four, play on the street, which I believe you guys have determined the location. I think many of us in here have no clue even how you determine the location and how quickly you determine a location. So enlightening us a little bit more on the path of defining a place, enlightening us on a deeper path on your PowerPoint slide. Again, some of the neighbors mentioned um, the articulation you can provide to the community on how you're going to spend the money and the methods in which you do versus uh, understanding clearly what is the definition of uh, a crisis and where is that population distributed amongst the cities and how we measure up against that and when it is becoming of something that you can declare as a crisis would be beneficial for all in this room to clearly understand. So uh, I vote no <laughs> if I had the right to vote no, and I encourage you guys to vote no, and I encourage you to try and educate the community before decisions are made like this. Thank you, Todd. Good evening. My name is Daniel Fries. I'm a new resident of Capitola, one year, uh, seven years part-time before that. Glad to call this home now. Um, I asked the council to vote no again, uh, with many others who stood up here uh, before me. It seemed to be rushed. It seemed that the last meeting, three people were not going to let it go through, and it got put to an emergency meeting very quickly and very quietly, and doesn't seem to be enough public comment to that. Um, in reviewing the HEAP information uh, in regards to rental assistance, assisting these individuals trying to find um, education and whatnot, I see a glaring thing missing is addiction addressing that issue, which I think mm -hmm. is an overwhelming concern by a lot of people. And I think that that is not clearly listed is um, something that the HEAP design should be addressed. 
as well as in part of the actual document itself for the California Homeless Coordinating and Financial Council, on page H3, collaboration, it states that a collaborative process may include, but not limited to, a public meeting, regional homeless task force meeting, letters of support and signatures of endorsement, an adopted homeless plan, an adopted budget, which includes heat funds, proof of public process, may include sign-in sheets, mini meeting minutes, agendas, public comment logs, and other items, it is important that a wide enough range of participants are consulted as part of the process. I ask you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I am Bruce Dunn. I live in uh, Depot Hill and 20 year resident here in Santa Cruz for 40, 50 years. I'm not urging a yes or no because I think you have good enough intelligence to know yes or no. But my point is, I think, and it's been said before, that there are three types of homeless situations. And all I hear in Santa Cruz for these last 70 years, whatever I've been, and here it, it, tonight, the short notice, I don't know what else you're thinking, but there's more than one type of homeless, and you have to treat the three different types differently, in my opinion. One would be women and children whose husbands have, have left them or have lost their job. They really need all the help we can get as soon as we can get them. That's money well spent. Secondly, the mentally ill and the drug people, they need to be incarcerated or they'll never get better. As you see by the shooting up in Davis and every other shooting almost, mm -hmm. if somebody who's just gone berserko should not have been left walking around. They all have previous incidences. Now that's a tough one to figure, but that's a third of the people who are mentally ill. They, they shouldn't be bunched in. And the third is people who kind of like that style. And God bless them, if they like it, let them do it. Put them a little shelter like a, a tin hut, but 90, not 90,000 bucks a month like they did in Santa Cruz. And then uh, after a while, give them a bus ticket. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any more yellow carts? Okay, next caller. Three minute orange, orangish red cards. Orange red cards, three minutes. Ah, Neil, thank you. Nell, yeah, there you go. Uh, good evening, my name's Nell Swessman, resident uh, Riverview Drive. I don't know really how you determine that 21 people in a city of 10,000 people constitutes a homeless crisis, which authorizes the city on an emergency basis to suspend land use rules, building codes, public hearing processes, health and safety rules, respect for neighborhood integrity and the community welfare in general, in order to create a homeless shelters to invite homeless persons from near and far to come on down to Capitola by the sea. Further, the thrust of this is to divert staff time and fiscal resources to creating, operating, and maintaining homeless shelters, time and money which should already, which is already fully committed to carrying on the daily functions of city government that we all depend on. And of course, the deal is complete with the typical cynical government tactic of dangling, tantalizing, one-time grant money to get cities to embark on programs for which there is no ongoing operational funding and placing financial burden ultimately and the burden of dealing with the negative impacts squarely on the shoulders of local residents and taxpayers. <coughs> it seems like I regularly read in the newspaper about cities unsuccessfully trying to come up with an effective solution for homelessness. Somehow, I never hear a mayor say, oh yeah, we have this totally under control and we are tickled pink to be a magnet for homelessness. <laughs> this sort of decision could have major implications and negative impacts on our community. To rush it in on an emergency basis with little or no opportunity for public participation is just plain bad government. Slow down. This is one bell that may prove very difficult to unring. Just continue your current policy of, of contributing prudently to funding larger and nearby agencies who have the staff, they have the expertise, and they have the locations 
to deal with operating homeless shelters. Thank you. Thank you, Nels. TJ? Oh, excuse me. Good evening. My name is Laurel LeBaron, and I'm a Santa Cruz County homeowner. And um, I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of some of the other comments that have been made. Something that put homelessness on my radar is that um, I recently went to New York City with my children on an educational trip. And what I noticed more than the Broadway shows and the Statue of Liberty was that there were no homeless people there. I was, uh, ran, uh, we went on the subway, we walked the streets, we went to a Broadway show and walked for about half a mile and I was looking around, not one homeless person. And that got me thinking and I started talking to people on the subway and I started noticing these signs that said, um, do, do you need shelter? Do you need help? Do you need a hand? And everything became centralized. And so I would vote no on this and urge you to vote no because I think we need to look at communities that have made this work. And I know they have different weather and different things like that. But they've found something that has made it work. There are not people living on the streets, at least in Manhattan and the areas that I visited. And I ended up speaking to people on the subway. I spoke to people in restaurants. And they all said that um, there's a centralized group and they do kind of a triage where they look and like the gentleman said, they, they decide, is are they homeless because they've lost their job? Are they homeless because of an addiction? Are they homeless because of mental health issues? Is it just they need a hand up? You know, they're just, you know, one month away from making it. And once they determine that, then they d determine what's going to happen. They have some um, sort of dormitory li style living for people that just can't make it on their own. But what they don't do is just blanketly give everybody the same thing and because it isn't the same. And I volunteer now at homeless shelters. I've even um, helping a family. Our family is helping them. You know, we've helped them. They stay in a motel. They have three small children. All the children have special needs. It's very difficult for them. So um, I'm saying that because I feel like that I have a right to say something now because I'm putting my money where my mouth is, literally. But I think the centralized idea or somebody to call um, the governor of New York or whatever, you know, what are they doing that's working? Because what we're doing is not working. Have you been to Costco lately? I mean, you know, and if centralized is working there, I think if we split it up and did something in Capitola, it might take away from being centralized and coming up with that. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. <laughs> TJ. Good evening, and uh, I sent you a letter late, but I'll be brief about it. Uh, first off, my hats off to Neil. I don't know Neil, but uh, thank you for serving, and and I think he makes a great point about having a maybe a hand up, but not a hand out. And uh, you really can't say any better than that. I, I I'm happy for where he's he's uh, got himself in life. Um, I am a little disappointed we're here. Quite frankly, the majority of the board, or the city council. Um, did not want to move forward with this, and um, the mayor chose to use his authority to call a special meeting, and I think that's unfortunate because it's it's a divisive topic. It's hard to talk about the homeless problem without sound, sounding insensitive. But um, I, I'm with the rest of the group here that um, I'm not for moving this forward. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot of reasons why. I don't know if you had an opportunity to talk with our police department. Uh, they had some inter interesting statistics. Uh, they ran around 20,000 calls in 2015, 2016, and 2017 each year, not between over the three years, but 20,000 each year, and um, service calls. Uh, what they noticed is, is trying to define which calls are actually for homeless or not. So they, they created a new code, and from April 2018 to December 2018, they found that they were running about 19 calls per month. About uh, you could extrapolate that out to about 230 calls annually, but keep in mind that's for what we have identified and how I'm not really sure that we have 21 homeless in, in uh, Capitola. So um, if you extrapolate that out towards uh, bringing homeless into our town, uh, the call volume's gonna only go up. And you may or may not know that I'm an advocate of our police department. I think we're underfunded and understaffed and with 20 officers uh, running those calls, um, I think we'd run into more difficulty and not be able to keep up with that. In addition, uh, the city has recently 
uh, chose to add marijuana cannabis sales on 41st Avenue, uh, north of Capitola Road. And uh, if you studied any reports, in fact, I sent you a letter of some re reports that show that uh, uh, homeless goes up 23% in Colorado Springs, and it's the same in uh, Washington and other areas, just for the sales of cannabis. I don't know why. That's just what our statistics find. So you add that on to uh, the homeless problem, homeless with the cannabis sales, I just see is it not a winning situation. Obviously, 21 doesn't really create a crisis in our town. Um, I think our city does more than its share when it comes to trying to help out the others. We give 2% of our uh, annual budget, or close to, uh, for nonprofits. That's by far more than the other communities in our area. So we do that. Uh, our city manager sits on the board with HAP, and we give them $34,000 a year. But one thing that this did cause me to do is do a little more research, and in the, oop, I gotta go real quick, HAP actually uh, has some str a strategic plan that identifies Capitola as having some homeless um, uh, for youth and stuff, areas to serve, and I that seems like a bypass. Is this situation, and I would hope that our city council, maybe the city manager stay on top of that and keep us involved uh, in that process. What I don't like as a planning commissioner in the city is that this allows bypassing, circumventing a lot of the input from state and local uh, statutes for what normal any of us, one of us would have to go through to have a uh, business or occupancy here. So I would ask that you uh, vote no on this and uh, keep us informed of any new improvements in the, uh, what's going on with HAP. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hey, good evening. I can't see my notes here on my phone. Um, most of actually what I wrote already was um, covered. I wanted to tell you before we end up with a lawsuit on a technicality, your date still says 2018 up there on the meeting. So we should fix that. <laughs> um, so I do want to just touch upon a couple things, if I may. Um, you know, I, I do agree. 21 is an unfortunate number, but it is not. I don't believe it's a crisis. Um, I think that we have a lot more things going on in our city that could warrant attention and funding if it's available. I guess what I really want to know, I have some questions personally about what, what how we would um, facilitate going down this path. You know, such as, you know, are the people, are they sober, are they drug free? You know, have they taken advantage of or have they tried to take advantage of other services offered by our county? Um, who's going to who's going to monitor who would be available or elected to utilize this housing? Um, do we have a check and balance? You know, are they allowed to stay for long periods of time? Where would the shelter be? There's lots of rumors floating around. So <laughs> I think that would be a big a big question that I think the community, you know, would like to know. Um, grant money can only go so far. So are we building a new building? Are we going to consider, um, you know, obtaining housing? Is the city going to purchase housing and allow this for being used in, as a shelter crisis? Is that a short term? Is that a long term stint? Um, you know, I think that I think that there's a lot to consider when, you know, wanting to go down this path. And I don't think anybody wants to have a welcome to Capitola like we have now in Santa Cruz. I mean, it is, it's, it's gotten ridiculous down there personally. Um, I think that there are programs available. I think that it does require some education. I think, um, I think that you know, having to pay for public safety in terms of monitoring, you know, how, how are we going to keep, you know, keep this from opening floodgates and having these facilities overrun with people not being in the, in the facility, but in and around the facility and the, the joining area. Um, so I do just want to say, I mean, and like I said, most of everything has already been sent, you know, echoed tonight, but I did want to just kind of run down those. Um, thank you. Thank you. Any more red cards? Okay, with that, seeing no more comments, I'll bring it back to City Council for um, deliberation. Um, I'd like to cover one thing first from staff. Um, 
this has been mentioned as being rushed. Can you comment on why this happened? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, so the, the, issue, the issue came about because um, originally the timeline to make a shelter crisis declaration was the end of this month, and uh, the county submitted the application to the state over the Christmas holidays, and they were told at that point that the deadline had been moved forward to January 15th. So that was when the January 15th, that was the first time that date um, came up, was I think we were informed of it January 4th. Okay, so normally we would have had a regularly scheduled agendized item for this. In this case, we were under uh, a deadline. So I felt necessary to call an emergency meeting because this is an important issue for this community. And I believe that an issue like this deserves public uh, vetting. I believe it involves the public having their chance to say about things that affect their community. That's why I ran on that campaign. So that's why we're here tonight. So with that, I'd like to open it to uh, city council comments. Sam. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, everyone, uh, for coming out um, on a rainy day and night uh, to uh, speak on this issue. Um, I think it's a reflection of how much we care about our community um, and how much we care about this issue. Um, and so I appreciate everyone's comments and, and the emails that you uh, sent us. Um, but, and, and um, one, to clarify, there were some uh, questions and comments about, you know, is there a shelter, where's the shelter? Just to be clear, there's no contemplation from the city's standpoint about building a shelter. This was not about that. It was about having the city become eligible for many of those other types of funding that, um, that you saw listed in the staff report. Um, rental assistance, subsidies, uh, support services. Um, and, um, and that's why we're here, because all of a sudden we were informed that the deadline is tomorrow, and so we needed to consider this issue. But let me get to the point about whether or not, for the evening, ab about whether or not uh, we should declare a shelter crisis. And I know I've seen uh, communities throughout, big and small cities and counties throughout California, making these declarations just for the purpose of being eligible for this funding. Um, however, unfortunately, because of the bad timing, um, uh, I do not support us passing this resolution this evening. Uh, for a shelter crisis. It's just, it, it's, it's too serious of an issue. It's come to us too quickly, and we haven't had time to really um, uh, incorporate everyone's input, to really flesh out the issue, to try to come up with smart solutions uh, for our community. Um, and um, so I just want to be clear about um, um, that because of, of you know, the due process uh, issues. Um, I'm not going to support um, declaring a shelter crisis this evening. With that said, I hope that we can continue this dialogue because I know now 21 may not seem like a large number and it may not be a crisis number. Um, however, we are surrounded by crisis uh, and the homeless don't necessarily abide by any particular boundaries. Um, and so we should be mindful uh, of how that number continues to change and grow. And what I hope is because at the end of this month, there's going to be another point in time count. And we will th shortly thereafter know whether that 21 has it grown to 45, has it dropped to 15, and that will give us some sense of what we're uh, facing and confronting and maybe what are the best solutions and for us to have time together to, um, um, uh, you know, prepare an appropriate response uh, with plenty of public input uh, to, uh, to develop any particular strategy that we've had. You know, the strategy, as I understand it uh, in the resolution, there's a reference to the home Capitola's homelessness plan. And that's, in essence, that plan is an all-in plan. In other words, we will work with the uh, major uh, uh, players, nonprofits, and other government entities in Santa Cruz County 
uh, on a common initiative and collaboration. I think that that's well and good, and we should continue to do that. Um, and um, and I think that one of the last points, and, and I'll share with you um, some of what is maybe driving my concern about the homelessness issue, and that's a recent case that was handed down by the Federal Appeals Court. Um, and the name of that, and that was in 2018, the name of that case is Martin versus City of Boise. And what that court held, and it's the law of the land here in California, is that, um, that municipalities cannot enforce their anti-sleeping or sitting or lying ordinances when the um, homeless individuals do not have alternatives. In other words, if there aren't enough shelter beds, they can't be prevented from sleeping in public places. And so I think that we need to be mindful of that decision. And what it means is that a do-nothing strategy may cause us to lose control. And so I think that with that facing us, we need to look at what are the best solutions, working with our police department uh, to be able to uh, maintain our abilities to enforce our ordinances um, and um, to keep the community um, orderly um, and maintain the charm that we have. But I think it's important in order for us to be able to do that, that we continue to work collectively with the, um, the major initiatives in the county, that we support the developments of, of shelters um, in other parts of the county. And you saw, I mean, we give now $34,000 to the winter shelter. But if you look at the numbers in the staff report, it's showing that there's an unsheltered number in the county as a whole of 1,800, uh, basically 1,799. And so um, if that population continues to grow and if we don't maintain our ability to control the issue by both through compassion and through civic responsibility, making sure that there are the appropriate shelters, there are the appropriate beds for the appropriate people. Um, and um, if we, we need to do that in order that we can maintain control in our community. But with that said, I mean, I'm hoping that we can continue this dialogue um, and <coughs> when the new uh, point in time count comes out, we can see where that has gone um, and maybe try to understand it more and then develop a collective strategy to deal with it. But so, but I'm going to vote no on uh, the question for the evening. <coughs> um, and again, thank you for listening and thank you for coming out. Um, excuse me, are we on item five where it's just city council staff comments not to? to no, we passed that. So we're actually on the discussion, yes. Do, do we need a motion on the table to actually discuss the item? Uh, no, uh, no, we're discussing right now. If during discussion someone would like to make a motion, anyone on the council here is able, except myself, to do that motion. Thank you. Yes, thank you everyone for coming out tonight and for the emails that you sent. I appreciate your input and I think it's important to be a part of this process and, and I appreciate that. Um, as TJ mentioned, it's hard to discuss these issues without sounding insensitive. Um, and these are emotionally charged issues. Um, and I very much believe that as a society, it's our responsibility to take care of those uh, who have trouble taking care of themselves. And as mentioned, um, there are issues of mental illness and addiction and other co-occurring conditions that you often see in um, homeless, undersheltered and unsheltered communities. That being said, I'm not for a, a shelter crisis declaration in Capitola, not because I don't think that there is a crisis for those who are uh, homeless in our region, but because I don't think that 21 in Capitola is enough to constitute a crisis, and because we have so many that are unhoused in South County and in Santa Cruz County, it seems almost inappropriate to expect them to travel uh, here 
to receive the services that they need. So my uh, concern about this isn't necessarily um, coming from a place of keep them out of Capitola as much as it is we need to meet them where they are to provide the services that they need. Um, so with that, I, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and make a motion now that we not declare a shelter crisis, but that we direct staff to continue efforts um, to address this problem regionally through the seat in the executive board on the HAP, uh, through our rental assistance program that we work with with CAB, uh, and through other programs that can address this problem regionally rather than um, in a very short, uh, excuse me, small uh, area such as Capitola. I'll second that motion. Okay, there's a motion on the floor and second. Uh, any other comments? Um, Yvette, um, Ed, uh, you want to go? All right. Um, first of all, to the community, I want to apologize for you having to take time to come after this meeting. I believe that when you elect us as your officials, there's a little bit of responsibility that you take and you put confidence in us to make decisions that are appropriate. I think there's a saying that you can uh, gain confidence by the raindrop and you lose it by the bucketful. And tonight, uh, I'm afraid that, you know, we put a little fear in you on Thursday night by not dealing with the situation when it first came up. I don't think that the, uh, the intention, or I don't think that the city council should be here to put fear in you about your home and your livelihood and where you've chosen to reside. Um, I think we all know there's a fact that there is a, a very severe homeless situation in this county. I think we're all sensitive to it. We want to believe that we're doing what we can. Uh, City of Capitola makes some contributions to that problem, but th to solve the problem, I don't even know that we know what the answer is, but it's probably going to take a lot of money. This fund that's coming from the state is a godsend because we all know, as was mentioned, there is actually a homeless crisis going on right now in Santa Cruz. We see it. Um, there was a tax measure that was on the ballot last year, Measure H, which was an effort by politicians in the county, a lot of people in this county, to uh, raise approximately $140 million to address this problem. That might have made a serious dent in the problem. Unfortunately, that measure failed. And it failed because I believe the measure wasn't ready to be introduced to the public. The people that put it together, great people, great minds, but they didn't have it fully vetted so that it would appeal to the citizens of this county. Uh, I think that that measure, if it was looked at and was maybe waited a couple more years to put on, might have gained some, some support, might have had more meetings, more input, uh, and maybe we can come up with an idea on how to address the problem. But the, the number one thing about transparency, when you hear about transparency is, is that this is where you have open government and you try not to do things without people knowing. I don't think that we were transparent by having a discussion on Thursday and then bringing it back on Friday and not letting people to see what's going on. That's not transparency to me. So I'm disappointed that we're here tonight, but I'm glad that, that, that I feel like we're going in the right direction. I think the crisis that we see in Santa Cruz is bona fide. I think 21 people does not represent a crisis. I've personally driven around the town to the locations where the homeless reside. And this number that it may change when they do a reanalysis, I think there's measures that we can do to address the problem. I think we have uh, situations that exist here that allow for opportunities for homeless people to get in backyards and neighborhoods and areas where they can cause problems. What we really need to do, and what my hope is, is that we come up with the problem, the people that are working on this down the road to resolve this. But for right now, what I need to do is, is what we need to do is we need to, to restore the faith in the community. And I think that comes by us, you know, making a concerted effort not to do something like this again, to make sure that the moves we do are calculated, to make sure that we follow the procedures, and to make sure that we don't take initiatives on our own to try to solve a situation. Thank you. You know, you know I, I, I'm sorry, you know, I, 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 I appreciate that you want to applause when you hear something good, but, you know, what we really need to do is this, this situation is severe, and applause is really not good for any of us because some people might be, you know, put off like they don't want to talk. I think we all know in our hearts that we would like to do something about the homeless situation, 
So anyway, I appreciate your, your, your concern to want to do that, but thank you. I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I appreciate uh, Councilman Peterson bringing forward and the rest of council tonight that this is an issue that we need to keep our eyes on. And so for me, running on a platform that um, stated clearly that I want to invest in, um, in our children, this really um, hit home for me because what was presented to us was not necessarily a shelter or a homeless shelter. It was brought to us as a youth center for youth to 22. And so when that was discussed um, with me and brought to our attention, that sounded compelling. And that is what was brought forward. And I, and, um, I just wanna add that there is an absolute um, process in how these decisions are made. So other cities like Santa Cruz and Watsonville who adopted this process, or excuse me, this declaration, they too have to go through a um, community outreach process. They have to get feedback from the community. There's multiple steps. And so being here today, um, I just wanted to make sure that all of those questions that were brought forward that I, I just wanted to address that. So I wanted to share that with, um, share that with all of you today. Um, so again, I appreciate Kristen um, bringing that forward. I think it's very important that we keep an eye on, on this issue. It is a countywide crisis, meaning it affects all of us. So um, as we maintain being engaged, I hope that all of you can continue emailing us any ideas and any additional input that you have in what Capitola and and all of us as residents can do to help this countywide issue because it does affect all of us. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Vet. Um, so I have a few comments. Um, first of all, there's a motion on the floor and we'll soon vote on that. Um, I am not gonna declare an emergency. Um, I never really did have an intention of declaring an emergency. To me, the numbers are clear. Um, all too often, we're like ostriches. We put our head in the sand. All too often, we do not want to talk about difficult issues. They are difficult because we have to make choices that will make some people uncomfortable, some people will be very upset, some people will be who knows what. This society is beset by all sorts of problems, and it doesn't help us if we walk away from them. So yes, last Thursday, I did take the, um, what was my power, I asked the, um, the city attorney to, to you know, roll on that, or to define that, to ask for an emergency meeting. And the reason why is I wanted to get that discussion started. I see good people here, many of you I know. In the bottom of your hearts, I don't think any of you wouldn't want to help when you can. You get a discussion going that makes this issue pertinent to everyone, and then it becomes important enough for the city council to do things like allocate money for the nonprofits that actually focus on these issues. Capitola, out of this whole county, is one of the few areas that really, out of proportion in a sense, focuses on trying to solve community problems by putting money where its mouth is. We give to all sorts of programs that help people not become homeless. We give money to people and, and agencies that help people who are homeless. We give money to agencies and people that want to deal with mental health issues. This community should be very thankful for doing that because that helps solve a general problem that is, in a sense, way beyond our small town's capability of solving. We should be very happy and glad that we're able and that we are willing to fund those programs. So yes, I did bring everyone here on Monday, not to get you startled and not to get you all scared about walking down the street and stuff like that. If that's the way you feel, I'm awfully sorry. I think Sam, Sam said it the best way. People came here because they're concerned. So I'm really happy you came. Um, 
I was actually like Neil. I remember I left the house at 18 or 19 years old. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. It took me to about 36 to finally get it settled down, start a family and get going. As Yvette just said, having a youth center might have helped me out, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't that crazy, but I don't know. I don't know. But I did not get my, <laughs> my life started that soon, let's put it that way. So that issue did sort of had some resonance to me and that's what started us off on this. But my main point tonight is I do not want this city government, this city council to be making decisions about things without an open process. An open process sometimes starts in my mind with bringing forth things that are difficult. And with that, I'd like to take a vote. Would you call out? Council Member Story? Aye. Council Member Peterson? Aye. Council Member Brooks? Aye. Council Member Bator? Aye. And Mayor Bertrand? Aye. With that, meeting is closed. Thank you for coming.